Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. We're going to take a look at the Smith normal form of a matrix and what it can tell us about the map that matrix represents. This matrix represents a map or an R module map or vector space map from R4 to R3. How do we know from R4 to R3? Well, each column represents the image of a standard basis element or standard basis vector. Well, there's four standard basis vectors in R4. So we have four columns. Now, the codomain is R3. We can see that right here since we're representing everything with three, with we have three rows here and three entries per column <clears throat> in those images. Okay, <clears throat> so what are we going to do? We're going to isomorphically change this map up. So it looks a little bit more easier to analyze. That's what the Smith normal form is going to get going to, going to do for us. Um, we're going to apply isomorphisms after this map, and we're going to apply isomorphisms before, and we're going to do it all right on the matrix itself, which is kind of cool. Um, so we're going to change up our three a little bit. Um, what's an isomorphism here? Well, interchanging entries um, and, uh, and, and also doing other types of things with the entries, moving back and forth, changing them up a little bit. And that's the same thing as changing up the rows here, because each row represents an entry. And you're going to be doing the same thing to every single one of these images out there. So yeah, you just do a, a whole thing per row. That's going to be row operations is what we're going to be doing. And that's going to be like isomorphisms after our map. So we'll start there. What kind of row operations can we do? Well, we can interchange rows, like switch them around. Another thing we can do is we can take a multiple of a row and add it to another. That's an isomorphic action because to undo it, you just take the negative of the multiple you did of that row and add it back and it'll get you back to where you started. Um, so that's very isomorphic. Um, uh, you can also take a row and just multiply it by something because you can undo that. You can multiply it by element of R. And not only are these isomorphic invertible, not only are these invertible actions, but they also preserve our module structure. Um, these basic types of ideas uh, where addition is preserved from input to output very nicely by doing these types of things. So we're going to start with an example here. What if we take um, negative two times the first row and add that to the second row? Okay, so the second row will become zero right there. Um, we'll end up getting um, two times negative two is negative four. So add that on negative four. Uh, negative two times one, negative two and one would give you a a negative one. Uh, negative two times one and two would give you a zero. Okay, great. Now we can also do the same type of thing with, uh, let's do the bottom one. Now notice what's happening here, what I'm doing. <clears throat> Multiply this top row by negative three and add it down. Notice that I've created zeros right here. Hey, that looks simpler. Underneath the one. So a one right here and zeros down below. Let's just finish that off real quick. We got zero. Negative three and two is negative six plus the two be negative four. Uh, negative three and uh, one uh, would be negative three and one would be uh, negative two. Um, right, and let's see. And then we have negative three and uh, um, yeah. So we have negative three and then one would be negative three and three would be zero. Okay, let's just check that again. Negative three. No, that's actually a negative one. Excuse me. Okay. Oh, wow. That's great. Okay, so we simplified it quite a bit. Look at that. So we have this and this. Now notice we can just subtract these two, like this row. Like we can take them. We can take negative one times this row and add it to that row on the bottom, and just end up getting a row of zeros right here on the bottom. Okay, row of zeros right there, um, and excellent. Okay, so it's simplified quite a bit. Now, what do we do from here? Well, 
kind of let's kind of think about what a goal is for a minute here and how we can make this look a little bit simpler. Um, so you notice how we have one, zero, zero, and we have this rows, rows of zeros. Getting zeros is nice, but we want to do this in kind of a systematic way. Um, kind of our goal is to get a matrix which has ones at the top and zeros everywhere else. So we only have a, a diagonal of ones, which eventually stops and just becomes zeros maybe, or maybe it goes ones all the way down. And so that's kind of the idea of what we want. Analyzing a matrix like this is so nice because you can already see, look, I mean, two standard basis elements already go to zero. In fact, that's like having something like R2 going to zero. Hey, that's actually the kernel. The kernel would be going to zero. Um, so that's actually the kernel uh, is R2. The kernel is has dimension R2 of the original matrix if we were to get something like this. Likewise for image, think about what the image is. The image right here looks like R2 as well because you have, you know, you have tuples of just two things coming out. And that looks very much like R2. That would be like, a range or an image of R2 dimension. So those are the types of things we'll be looking for. So we want to be able to get something like ones in a diagonal up here and zeros elsewhere. We are successful so far, right, at getting the first column looking like this first column. All right, now let's just pause for a minute. We got this one into position. It was in position at the very, very beginning. And that was nice, that was very convenient. Now we're gonna use this one. Notice what we did with row operations. We use it to play against what was below it to get zeros. Let's keep using this one. We also need zeros going this way, don't we? So let's do, oh my goodness, what kind of operation can we do? Let's do column operations. What do column operations do? Well, they're actually they behave the same way. Um, taking a multiple of a column and adding it to another, interchanging them or multiplying the column by something. That's actually really nice. Um, what, what do column operations do? Well, notice what we're doing. We're working in R4 because we're working with entries and four things here. Column operations are actually an isomorphism before the map. So we're preserving what the map does and how it behaves. So we can use this one and use it to play against these guys, just like we use the one to play against the things below it. So we can take maybe negative uh, two times this first guy and just clear the and and make this a zero. Notice once we get a one zero zero, actually for free, we can just make all the rest of these zeros because when we do, when we take multiples of this column and add it to other things, nothing else is affected because you just have zeros. So we can already just kind of loosely just say, hey, get look. I already know this, this is just going to be zeros. I got a one right there and zeros down below it. I'm good to go. Got one, zero. Okay. I am so close to this form over here. Okay. So what we're going to need to do next is we need to get a one in this position right here. Now we can either do a row or column operation to do that. Um, uh, you know what? Why don't we just do a column operation? Um, we can even multiply both these columns by negative one and interchange them. I mean, this could look just like um, one and then four right there. And then since this looks really nice, you can take a multiple of this and clear this one out. Negative four times this column plus that column, clear that four out. Hey, it's exactly what we wanted. And just as suspected, okay, the columns of zeros, number of these, that's the dimension of the kernel. The kernel's behaving like R2. Um, so the dimension of the kernel is equal to two. Here, the dimension of the image or the range of the map represented over here is um, also R2. Oh, well, two, okay, the dimension is two, but it's behaving like, like an R2 because you're looking at tuples. I mean, you can even see kind of what this does. I mean, if you input something into this map, A, B, C, D, what happens? I mean, you're going to end up getting um, uh, you're going to end up getting something like a b zero. Notice that c and d went to zero. That's like a kernel, and uh, a b transferred to here. 
I mean, that's behaving very much like a dimension of two degree of freedom two two things kind of kind of swapping around ordered pairs with two things. So dimension of range, dimension of kernel, very easy to see in this form, Smith normal form um, of, a, of a matrix. And uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.